This is a 19 year old with ectopia lentis in her only seeing eye. Her other eye is amblyopic. She's referred for cataract surgery and has four diopters of cornea astigmatism, so we'd like to place the toric lens. Here we're using dispersive viscoelastic to uh, cover the area that is exposed where the zonules are absent. Uh, we're going to use an air bubble to push that viscoelastic in place, compact it, while we stain with vision blue. Uh, the vision blue is dripped onto the surface of the lens capsule and provides a nice stain. Uh, we then uh, add more viscoelastic. Uh, and we're going to try to start the capsulorexis here. We're using a cystotome. And you can see it's a bit difficult to puncture the anterior capsule, but we're able to get the capsulorexis started. And we want to start as close to the middle of the lens as possible so that uh, there's less chance of this tearing out. Uh, now we're going to start to tear. And the problem is that there's uh, really no counter-traction because the zonules are poor on this side. The other side, there's some zonules. That's why the whole lens is pulled over. But on this side, there are no zonules. So we're going to use a Kuglin hook to provide some counter-traction. And now I'm going to uh, place an iris retractor to uh, stabilize the anterior capsule. And I'll use my left hand because it's going to give me a better angle. Uh, I'm going to come in from the left side. I'm going to tear away from me using that iris retractor to supply counter-traction. And the problem is I'm going to have to go under the iris where I cannot see. So I'm going to add another iris retractor to try to provide some counter-traction and pull the lens over just a little bit uh, and use my left hand to continue the tear. And here I'm going under the iris where I can't see. And this is a, a little bit of a treacherous part of the uh, capsular excess. So we have to be really careful to make sure the rexus doesn't tear out uh, when we do that. But the rexus is completed. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, inject dispersive viscoelastic in the capsular bag to expand it. And um, I'm going to use a capsule tension segment, uh, place this in the capsule bag. And uh, what I want to do is hook this uh, to bring this over uh, and center the lens a little bit better uh, and stabilize it so I can go ahead and remove the uh, lens. Because uh, we want to try to preserve the capsular bag. Now, I, I can't reach the eyelid of the capsule tension segment with iris hook. It's not long enough. So we're going to try to use a capsule retractor uh, to pull the whole bag over. But you see, it's not long enough. And when I try to hook the uh, capsular bag, it actually ends up completely in the eye. So I have to take it out. So I made a decision. What I'm going to do is remove some of the uh, cortex and lens material in the bag so I can see the eyelet of the capsule tension segment better. Uh, to inject a little bit of uh, dispersive viscoelastic here to uh, elevate this. And now I'm going to come from a slightly different angle. Uh, I'm going to grab the uh, capsule tension segment, pull it over, and hook it with my other hand. So now I can pull on the... Uh, capsular bag and bring this over using the capsule uh, tension segment to stabilize it. I'll now add uh, another uh, capsule retractor here. Now I can reach and get this in the equator of the bag and really uh, stabilize things. So now we're going to go ahead and aspirate the lens. This is a 19-year-old girl and the uh, lens is quite soft, so we don't need FACO. We can just uh, aspirate the soft lens. The patient's vision was poor, obviously, because the uh, lens was displaced and bisecting her pupil. But there really is not that much opacity here. Um, the lens, of course, is misshapen, and that creates uh, irregular astigmatism. But we're going to be removing that. Uh, and again, our goal is to try to preserve the capsular bag here. So we're cleaning this out with the irrigation aspiration. And this is uh, somewhat edited. Um, and now I'm going to add another capsule retractor here to further stabilize the capsular bag. Um, and uh, when I do this, um, now the goal is going to be to stabilize the bag further with a capsule tension ring. So we're going to inject the capsule tension ring, and we can actually watch this going in 360 degrees because the uh, left side of the lens here is actually above the iris plane. So if we're going to suture this in place, we need to get this uh, in a different position because I, I won't be able to pass the suture uh, with that 
part of the bag in my way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the capsule tension segment, thread this with a Gore-Tex suture, and then place this back in the equator of the capsular bag. And we're going to position this uh, exactly where the uh, zonules are weakest uh, at the apex of the uh, detachment of the capsular bag, and we've marked that previously. So here we're placing this uh, in the equator of the bag. And um, now, once this is in place, we're going to remove the capsule retractors so that the uh, lens bag complex will fall back out of our way. We're going to make two sclerotomies and connect them with the scleral groove. And we're putting this on each side of that blue mark, which is where I've determined that the capsular bag is weakest. Uh, now I'm undermining the scleral groove to create a little shelf. Uh, for the Gore-Tex suture to be covered. And uh, we're going to enter with the 25 gauge forceps and grab one end of the suture. And we're going to keep track of which end is which to make sure that the sutures don't cross. And then we'll grab the other end of the suture. And we're trying to be careful not to rupture the anterohyloid to stay above that, but to stay below the iris plane. And we'll go ahead and do a temporary tie here to pull things over. And this temporary tie is just to stabilize things. We're going to go back later and lock that. So now we're going to inflate the capsular bag with viscoelastic. This is cohesive viscoelastic. And we're going to add uh, some more support for the anterior capsule to expand it uh, and to uh, stabilize it so we can go ahead and inject our lens into the bag. And this will make it a safer uh, insertion of the lens to have the retractors in place. So we're injecting our single piece iHance extended depth of focus toric lens. Uh, and we're gonna rotate that to the uh, correct axis of 70 degrees, which we marked at the beginning of the case. You can see the little red mark. Uh, and so that's where we're gonna line this up with. And now we're going to uh, remove these uh, iris and capsule retractors and uh, sweep the anterior capsule for lens epithelial cells. That will help uh, avoid capsule contraction down the road. Um, and now that the lens is in place, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the tension on the Gore-Tex suture. And once we've done that, we're gonna lock that. And we don't wanna make this too tight. We just wanna tighten up to uh, balance the zonules uh, uh, on the other side and stabilize and center the lens bag complex. We'll now cut this, uh, rotate the knot into the eye so that it's not going to be exposed, and uh, pull on the uh, uh, capsule tension segment, and the suture itself will be under the surface of the sclera. We close the conjunctiva, remove the uh, viscoelastic from the anterior chamber with the irrigation aspiration handpiece, and you can see that this is very stable. The lens is very well centered and it's on the uh, correct axis. We just give a little nudge to make sure it's stable and the uh, case is completed. The next day in the office, the uh, lens looks very well centered. The patient saw 2040 with a correction of minus 0.5. Thank you for your attention.